life has changed quite a lot. And of course this village has changed a lot. It wouldn't bother me to move away from it, but uh, you become part of it, don't you? Jean Cole has certainly become part of Rackenford. She's lived here nearly 70 years. She and her husband George came here in 1950, just after they married, moving into the first council house in the village. My words to my husband was, I'm not staying here, I don't like it. And I'm still here. <laughs> Jean's husband, George, died a few years ago. They built up a successful haulage company in the village, which is now run by their son. Rackenford is surrounded by farmland and they would haul livestock to market, but times have changed. There aren't many of those markets left around Devon. These days they haul things like feed, fertiliser and building materials. But they're still here. A lot of local businesses have gone as times have changed. The village used to be full of shops. Now there's only one. That was the great change which came in the 1950s really, and people still lament the disappearance of shops. Sarah Child has written a history of Rackenford documenting how times have changed. It seems amazing today to think that a, a village of the size of Rackenford could sustain, you know, what is it, two bakers, two grocers, two, a butcher? Two tailors. Two tailors. When you look back at the photographs of farmers, um, you do see that they were very beautifully dressed. To go to market, you put on a decent tweed suit and boots. So <laughs> tailors and bootmakers were essential. I've always been inclined to ask, well, what was it like? And they always tell you, well, it was very hard work. You know, we worked like, you know, the young ones nowadays don't know what work was like. And we were poor, you know, we were thankful to get an orange at Christmas. And, and they always end the conversation with the same remark, which is, but we was happy. <laughs> I think people were happier because they were quite satisfied with what they'd got, whereas nowadays young people don't seem to be satisfied at all. I've had a very good life here. On the whole, I've, I've been happy living in, in Rackenford. In rural villages like this, there aren't as many people around during the day as there once were when farms employed more hands, all working together, and children came home from school for lunch. They say there was an everyday buzz about the place, which seems to be missing now. Once upon a time, I knew everybody that lived in the village. You lose a connection, don't you? It's not as it used to be, but it's still good. Every school day here in Rackenford begins with a bit of exercise. The children do their daily mile with a brisk walk or even a run around the village to set them up for the day. They are fast enough, aren't they? What do you like about being at Rackenford School? What's, uh, what's good about it? I've got loads of friends and stuff like that and, you know. Doing the walk, when it's raining, what's that like? It's good. You don't mind I... coming out when it's raining, do you? No, it's brisk. Unless I'm in shorts. Which like you are. Today. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I didn't wear my shorts today. Rackenford Primary School is small, just 60 pupils across three classes, but the size, they say, and its location in a fairly remote village is part of the attraction for parents. I think that um, because it's a small community that they, um, they have a nice close-knit friendship group and then of course it offers an opportunity or a better opportunity for us to get to know other parents and that kind of helps with the community feel and The school well. itself and has a great community, it's sort of like a loving family almost so it's yeah. a really nice experience for the girls. We've got children in years five. We're a small school on the top of a hill and we're very happy. I particularly really like a small school setting. I like the relationships that you build with the families and with the children, and you really do get to know each and every child really well, and that's really important for their education, because then you can really meet their needs. Rackenford is part of a federation with Tiverton High School and one of the bigger primaries in town. It's been that way for two years. The fact it can draw on the resources of those larger relations is part of what allows it to keep going here and make use of the natural environment around it, with lots of lessons run outside on the common or in the woods. It's fun to be in the countryside because you can find lots of different 
things and lots of different creatures. I prefer it outside because you get to look at real nature and pretend that you're a real scientist. Inside we have to do like maths and English but outside we get to do nature instead of all the boring math stuff. And you prefer that, do you? Yes. <laughs> what really sets Rackenford apart from other schools around here is its attitude to home learning. They operate a flexible scheme where some children come to school three days a week and can be homeschooled by their parents on the other two days. Fourteen pupils, almost a quarter of the children here, are educated in this way. And because it's unusual, it draws families from much further afield. Wellington in Somerset and Exeter and boosts the school's population. They get all the benefits of school and the community here and you know all the expertise of the teachers and the other children which is fantastic but also that we go out and explore the world you know we go and go to museums and activities that actually are suited to that individual child and so we can get more in depth with the learning that they're doing and you know project based stuff. We're finding that um, our homeschool children bring with them to school a real breadth of knowledge um, and a very, uh, they're quite very grounded and that is a win-win because that really helps um, and contributes to the class dynamic. We have something so special here, it's, it's a lovely place to be, we've got lovely children fantastically hard-working staff. I don't want to be anywhere else. The children of Rackenford have been taught at the local school for generations, and while times have changed, it's still at the heart of the community. and Anna Grujon are celebrating. It's 10 years since they moved out of the city and into the heart of the Devon countryside to live a more sustainable life in Rackenford. It's hard work, but it's so rewarding. And yeah, the work that we do, it's nice. We can see at the end of the day what we achieve each day, and that's pretty special in itself. They make a living from the charcoal they produce. We first filmed with them back in 2013 when the business was taking off. They also run courses here and have an eco cabin they rent out. Running a business in a rural spot like this has its challenges. The open day they hosted in the woods where they live on the edge of Rackenford was a thank you to the local community for the welcome and support they've had. It's been intense, um, yeah, but very, very good. And yeah, we've achieved so much and are just so happy with how it's all gone and yeah. We've met some amazing people, um, love the area, yeah, love what's going on and it's amazing to be a part of Rackenford and Devon and just, yeah. Moving into the woods was unquestionably the best thing we ever did. Um, we're, we're much poorer in cash terms than we ever were before, but we're richer in terms of our lifestyle and richer in terms of our daily freedom uh, and the quality of the food that we eat and, um, and living in Devon is just fantastic. We really couldn't have done better. With rural pubs in decline across the country, taking one on in the current climate might be seen as a questionable decision. The stag in Rackenford has opened and closed a few times in recent years, but the new couple in charge here who bought the pub nearly two years ago are confident they can make a go of it. It's, it's tough, it's tough, but you know, when I think back to what it was like last year to how it is this year, we keep moving forward, so it's good. They've changed things around a bit, moved the bar, which hasn't gone down well with all the locals, and focused on the quality of the food they offer to bring in diners from further afield. The challenge is balancing that with keeping locals coming back for their regular pint. It's not a village of holiday homes, you know, it's a village of residents, people who are making their lives here. And, um, and with the church and the school and the community shop, it all comes together, as the pub does as well. It's all essential to yeah, good village life. It's a real village. It's not, it's not your picture postcard village in lots of ways. Um, but I think that's why the people here are real people. Um, and they're here because they want to be here and because of the school and the shop and the pub, hopefully. <laughs>
The so-called witches' marks burned into the woodwork hint at the history locked up in these walls. It's said to be Devon's oldest pub, and it's been a community hub for hundreds of years. Autumn show in Rackenford is one of the highlights of the village calendar. Members of the local gardening club get together to show off the best of the vegetables, fruit and flowers they've grown, the buzz of conversation against such a colourful backdrop and the heady scent as you walk into the barn where they hold their show is something of a sensory overload. In a rural village like Rackenford, these events are the glue which help bind the community together. It's extremely important. It gets the people to come together and word spreads, you know, by word of mouth. And I think it's wonderful. It brings the community together because they have a harvest supper in another barn further up the road. And then there's, there's all sorts happening over the year. We have an Easter show as well, or a spring show, bonfire night. All sorts happening in the village. It's a remarkably lively community. Um, the, the new people who move in tend to join in in a way that is surprising, really, to many people. Partly because there's a community shop. They come and volunteer and then they get to know everybody. Rackenford's community shop is a real success story. Shelves stocked with essentials, local produce, papers. There's a post office counter two mornings a week. For many people, it's a lifeline. But the only reason it works is that it's staffed entirely by volunteers who do their shift behind the counter to keep this valuable service going. I was so impressed with the shop and the level of community activity in general that I thought, well, I better get out there and get involved. And it is very important because that's how these things keep going. It's, um, it's a way to get to know people, but it's a way to be part of what's going on and to get involved with what's going on. And that's, it keeps that community feel. The shop is a source of great pride for the village, which does have a strong community spirit. And there's a sense that the people who live here are keen to protect traditions like the Autumn Show for future generations. When I was growing up in the village, I would say that this was probably quite a normal thing. Um, and as, as the village has changed over time, um, I would say this is perhaps happening a little bit less and less. So actually having something like this today is a real reminder of what it used to be like and hopefully what the next generation will sort of take on once we've finished our time. Bob Cruz, ITV News, Rackenford.